And it's recording. All right, perfect. So, welcome back to the insanity that is Nox Vitalia and by the dice. Hi. And before we begin the madness that is ensuing, <coughs> let's talk about announcements. Thank you, as always, to Rep Reptiles, a local scaly daily rescue that provides us with various materials as needed at this point. We also just got a new reptile. We did. What'd you catch? A Rankin's dragon. Woohoo! Pretty. Very pretty. Very small and likes to burrow and make mom believe that it got out of its cage. <laughs> and we Child got, after my own heart. And we just got a spider and a tarantula. And of okay. course, going to Yeah, I saw the baby jumping spider. They're so cute. And of course, going to her, she got them. Yep. I love jumping spiders. They fist bump you. <laughs> Anything that'll fist boop your fingertip is a cool bug in my opinion. And my spider is... Got any more anyway, dice? Other announcements. Uh, thank you to Thomas for Foods and Heroes Feast and such of that nature. Um, music will be credited once <coughs> the recording is done because I'm not 100% sure as to who. I have all of the crediting information. Yeah, you need to get that on a piece of paper where I can read it off so that until I have it memorized. Um, <coughs> I also want to thank myself for not being half naked for this broadcast just because I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right there with you. Just put it this way, if you're half naked for the broadcast and I get to see your nipples, that means I get to take pop shots and <laughs> rubber bands out of them all game. I got a rubber band, John. I'm down. Cool. <laughs> as long as we're on the same page with that and you're cool with it so I don't get punched if I, I hit one right. Dice. Well, I mean, Thomas the Santa Queen said no, so I mean, you know. That I just means you can't instigate it. Right? I got the highest dice. Go ahead. That means no instigation. Okay. Oh. Whatever happens no, to the dice start rolling ain't my problem. Okay. <clears throat> I'm the referee, man. Anyway. I just half pierced my belly button with my uh, clipboard. Okay. Well, at least you didn't put it all the way through. That's like a fucking right. eight gauge. That'd be terrible. Yeah, you could be sitting yeah. next to me and have gotten bitten again. Once <laughs> bitten, twice shy. Well, I've been bitten twice, so I think. I think according to, you know... Twice bitten, running motherfucker. Well, if you <laughs> call the old movie Once Bitten with, you know, Jim Carrey, it's three bites on the inner thigh and then you're a vampire. No. Well, thankfully they weren't on your inner thigh. That's the first movie right? ever. Do what? Anyway. That was the first movie ever. Yeah. To the task at hand. Alright, I'm going to The room was popped open. The rather large set of double doors when we last left off. Torin had wandered off in, a, in search of whatever you wanted to go looking for information <laughs> or stuff or things in whatever direction you'd like. This is a very large tower, so figure you've got 20 floors up, God knows how far back into the mountain because, well, they just opened the door to that part of the building. And. You do know that a dragon, a gold dragon, has been using it as its hoard for a very long time. Well, at least as long as the cataclysm has been. So we're going to start with you while everybody else is gathered around the door. Did anybody call out for Torin once the door opened? I believe Pudgy did. You mean wisp? <coughs> wisp, yeah. Okay, so Torin. <coughs> Where would you have wandered yourself off to in this tower? What kind of stuff would you have been looking for? I think if we remember correctly, we discussed that I went to the central park because I'm doing research and trying to figure out what the, the, the where the plans are for the thing we're trying to build and figure out what it is. Uh, so... And with probably would call me with a fucking system because, you know, he did that to me then. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're all friends here, but in game, our gloves can be off, man. I mean, well, yeah, the last game, um, Tiger and Bile Spout were beating the shit out of each other for a good chunk of it. Yeah, it's a pretty good fight. <laughs> um, no, I'm just trying to use the computer to try to figure out since we killed the gold dragon. I need to figure out where. 
Mildred and the team is at as far as what they've gotten done, what would need to be done next. Military? All right. She's, yeah. the, but she's the chief engineer. You haven't met her yet. Oh, okay. You have not met Mildred yet. Okay. She's half orc, half gnome. All right. I'd probably call her up to me just so I could get uh, an update so, so I can figure out where they're at and what she has planned wise and what she, what she knows because we need to finish getting the materials <coughs> for the portal. So, <coughs> excuse me, my son's trying to escape this week. Thank you. Uh, so. It would take you maybe about a half hour of going through the miscellaneous people who were brought in to find Mildred. Her being about three floors up from you <coughs> and what looks like a very odd like type of work, some kind of workshop. Mm -hmm. You find her bent over a workbench fiddling with something that's metal with odd glowing crystals and a few files of strange glowing liquids in it. And right about the time you walk through the door, lucky for her, I rolled for that one because I know her stats. <sighs> um, she went, oh, so that's how it works. She whomps it twice with the base of her fist, and it looks like she's calculating the amount of pressure on a strange round pad, and then pu pushes a button. The thing whirs to life, and very soft cello music starts playing through the room. A pink haze floats in the air. I need you to roll a wisdom saving throw. Uh, Mildred turns around and said, looks at you grinning. She, her features look softer to you at this moment. But she looks like the epitome of I just found the prettiest thing on earth. Like I was already attracted to her, so there's no need to like fucking amp that shit up. Oh no, it's like you just it made it. She totally rolled a two. Okay. Yeah. She is one hundred percent under a charm person type deal. And kind of walks across, looks up at you. Hi. You do that whole little finger under the chin. What you doing? <laughs> Pushing buttons. <laughs> Why? How else am I supposed to figure out what they do? And then she really turns, oh yeah, I wanted to find out what happens if I hit the purple one. Ah! And she turns around and walks it. And as okay, uh, are you gonna try and stop her, or are you just gonna like words? Uh, I'm gonna be like uh, 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 and like while well, actually trying to find. Uh, okay, that did give her a wisdom saving throw. It's on the flashing one. You trying to stop her? Did as charge? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh no. She slips your arm as you go to reach, grabs, it's fine, I won't push the purple one, and grabs hold of a, it kind of looks like a shake weight, but there's two liquids in it that are separated. One of them is <coughs> blue, the other one is clear-ish. It still kind of glows, but it's a whitish almost glow. If you get the idea. And she goes, <coughs> fine, I'll just do this. Make a deck save, please. Oh, God. Oh, no. Six. 17. You're good. That 
that's three d ten. Three d ten or d ten? That three d ten space chain lightning, right? I don't. Thought so. This is for like if I have to write down my HP. Nine, thirteen and a half. You take seven points of damage. Mildred is blown back 15 feet when she shakes this thing. Knocked unconscious, well, possibly. Sorry. No, she not 20 her fucking saving throw for constitution, so she's slammed into the wall, frazzled, covered in black soot, and the thing drops to the ground, a pulse of electricity hitting it's it. It's easier right down to her edge points. And I need everybody else who would be down by that door to roll a perception check, please. Uh, D20? You have D20 plus your perception um, in your skills list. 17. Plus your perception. 17. 30. I said A, not all of them. We'll pick one. I picked one. No, this isn't L1. We're not rolling all of the D20s. Exactly. (laughs) Yet. You got it right. I got it. No, if I'm telling you to roll all the D20s. It's normally because I feel guilty throwing that much damage at you. Nine! Plus five? Yeah, nine. Which is... You're so pleased with yourself having opened that door that you're completely <laughs> oblivious to everything. <laughs> yeah, Congratulations. Say what now? I want money. Okay, I got Thank a you. ten. We added you're trying to figure out how that door got opened by that pipsqueak. Oh, no. Um, I got a twenty-seven. I don't know, find something. You got a what? Twenty-seven. Front perception. perception. Oh yeah, that's right. You're like proficient in that crap. Twelve. Yeah, I am too. I just rolled 12. really low. All right, so everybody who got over a fifteen because of the distance, you don't have to worry about it because you saw what went down. You were definitely heard it because Torin, you were right there. Um. Everyone else, instead of the door, your attention is suddenly drawn up the stairwells. Mm-hmm through the main atrium, you could hear what sounded like an electrocution. Imagine 50 tasers arcing off of everything metal in a 360 degree radius for 10 feet. Sounds like my kind of party. So 20 foot across. Can no. I have a perception and see what, the, if I can figure out what this room is, if you tweak it around. Sure, go ahead and roll. I'm going to spin on my heels put my hand like right next to my beak and go, the bug zappers around here are bitches! 26. <laughs> it says, deterrent laboratory. What? Like control center or just deterrent laboratory? A laboratory for developing deterrence is what you would, when you actually stop to look around the room, that thing that Mildred had picked up was on a shelf labeled grenades. I'm just kidding. Is she there, like, she on the there's another cell? shelf that's labeled non-lethal deterrence where she was pushing buttons and smacking something. Um, hence the pink mist and the charm person effect. Um, right. Necro Barbie. Sometimes you need them alive. Yeah. Fresh human hearts work so much better than stale ones. I'm just going to grab her. She on the, she's laying on the ground, right? She's kind of propped up. Okay. I'm just going to walk over. If she's like sitting on the ground anyway, I'm just going to grab her by her foot and I'm going to drag her out. Says, you're, not, you're not allowed to remember again. And I'm going to drag her out. She's looking up at you still dazed from the charm thing because you didn't attack her. Something else did. And she's just kind of, okay. When her you- skirt rides up as you're dragging her because farm girl peasant skirt. You're seeing bloomers, and that's about it, so her undergarments go to below the knee. We're talking traditional medieval here, man. Sorry, it's either that or nothing, and she's a modest woman. Let me just look at her and wink. She, when I get out to the hall, what do I see? What other rooms are You see about six or seven other faces looking around and seeing a smoking and sizzling Mildred half-dressed being drugged by the ankle by you down the hallway. I'm just gonna look at everybody One guy looks at you, it's like that, huh? Don't push buttons. Door. Until you know what the fuck to do, and make sure you're, at least in minimal, investigate the room you walk into. 
to try to figure out if it says anything, whether or not you should be in there or not, or if this happens. Door. What do you mean, says anything or not? Like this one says, literally you know, labeled yes, deterrent lab. What's a deterrent? I need you to roll an insight for me, please. Twelve. That'll work. So on a twelve, it would occur to you after having a few minutes of this type of a kind of bouncing back and forth conversation that it's not so much that the people that you're working with are incompetent. It's that they are a part of a class of individuals within the current caste system of this meritocracy that cannot afford to go to school to learn to read. They are very good at their trades, good at their crafts, gifted at creating blueprints. They know just enough numbers and mathematics to do what they're good at. But as far as the ability to read and write, they ain't mages. They can read and write, they can read and write within the limits of their profession. Vocabulary outside of that is boring. Blueprints are pictures. Yes, but you still have to write down math and descriptions. Yeah, they know numbers and measurements and they can draw it for you. Most of them are quite gifted artists. Mm, how do I describe this then? Uh, let's put it this way. You know when you're forging something and you throw water on the coals and you know, it spoils and it pops and things come at you, right? Yeah. Uh, imagine walked in the room and you couldn't see hot coals because uh, someone hit them. And then you like step on something on the floor, you touch the button or something, and you're like, I want to touch this out of curiosity. Like you just like, you feel a need to do it. And About this time, a frog in mage's ropes goes hopping down the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> what? A frog in mage's robes. Or something like that happens. But say those, you push the button and then the coals you didn't know were there fall on you and you get burnt. That's a deterrent. Do something stupid and get a boo boo. Okay? Okay. Talk about play stupid games, one stupid prizes. Welcome to the theme for 2024, <laughs> my actual life. <laughs> and if you have any questions, just come find me, and I'll let you know if it's safe or not. <laughs> At the very least. Well, you know what? You know what? How do you know? That dice is cursed. Ooh, think of me as your daddy, and if you want to go outside and play, you have to ask me permission. Okay? Well, I've got a whole bunch of things in here, and you hear like seven other people oh, pipe up. But we've got things over here, and here, and here, and here. We really need information on this. We can't help if we don't know what it does. All right. Door. I'm going to start. You all can hear one hell of a commotion starting from upstairs. Voices shouting out of corridors go, what does this do? What does this do? Hey, what does this do? Hey, what does this do? Four or five people walk up to you with one carrying a rather odd metallic object. It's holding a black crystal that is glowing red between sets of mithril prongs on either side, almost like a lantern with a odd lamp. What's this one do? Hey, uh, oh, let me name it. Let me name it. Let me name it. Shit, I named it. What the fuck did I name it? You named it, and then I named it. What'd you name it? Um... I haven't written that. Hey, I hope it's in somebody's notes because I didn't write that shit down. I do not understand. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I never Trauma? got control, so let's then my notes to write down. Trauma? Gideon. Yep, it's Gideon. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gideon. Yes. You're hearing what's going on. Um, yes. Let's, for your safety and <coughs> yours and all of our 
hours, basically. Uh, how smart of an AI is this? Well, I mean, she's my AI. She's pretty smart. No, 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 no. I'm asking the deal. Um, <laughs> the honest answer on Gideon being the thing that was installed in this in the first place, and technically not even yours, it is sentient. Oh, no. <laughs> so um, the answer to that question is, go ahead and roll insight at a disadvantage. That's not my point. I, I, I know it's smart, but my thing is actually more what is her capabilities. Like, crazy lady ran this and did experiments. Hmm? Do you ever see Star, Stargate? I have seen Stargate. I have seen Star Trek. I have seen. Do you see the episode Wars. where um, I have seen Battlestar Galactica? And by the way, Gaius Balthazar, I've gotten to kill him because of Final Fantasy. Well, you know. So you know, like the head sucker that makes all the old smart shit. Yeah. What he says. She's capable of like downloading. Because I do that all the time. Languages and the ability to read into people's heads. You could ask. That's what I'm trying to go for. Um. To your, you're not sure, but you're pretty sure it might be possible. She's definitely more advanced than any other auto automation. I literally am. I'm asking because, like, can you make hmm? these people for make, give these people the gift of language and the ability to read, so they don't uh, blow it all up for our own safety and yours? I have the capability of conducting educational classes in the common tongue to teach them written language. This will require approximately six to eight months for them to be able to read half of the tower. Is there accelerated downloadable neurological download uh, version of that? Yes, but I must caution. One in every three candidates will die from brain aneurysm. Is that because of the download rate? No. No logical overload? Method. Doing anally? Like, what the fuck? All information through contact with magical energy will be downloaded directly into the person's consciousness and imprinted, thus, thus imparting muscle memory, physical capability, and full concept and comprehension of said written language. Where would you be able to perform said? Uh, procedure. Sub level 36, room 23D. You might want to write that down. Oh, I'm not going there. Sub level 36. D. Room no. 23. Room 23D. Oh, I thought he said 26D. He said 23D. I'm going to gather all of the 3D. minions of Mildred, is what I'm going to call them. Mm -hmm. And we're going to head that way. Post haste. You all would hear boots coming down the stairs. All of the boots. The map actually does lead through the door that they just opened. I'm just going to march past and lay the back and out the way and just open the door and go in. It's a black wall. There's no light. There's no nothing. It stops. Light actually stops at the doorway. We can pass through it. You gotta try and walk through it. Uh, that's where the AI told me I had to go. So, uh, yeah. Door. Okay. okay so you see Torin, and I'll beat him to it. Twenty miscellaneous engineers, artisans, and people of that nature all quite terrified looking, following him. And he is dragging a half orc, half gnome. So green kind of orcish facial features, but five foot six versus seven foot tall. Okay. Not ugly, not attractive, just kind of average. If you were going to go on the scale of one to 10, she's a solid seven. Um, Dragging her, her dress riding up. She's quite singed. Looks like somebody has electrified her. Her hair is frizzed out. Like, worse than a ginger at a static cling party. <laughs> no, I mean like went to the science museum and touched all the glowy orbs. Like my hair. <laughs> like my hair. No. But worse. 
Yeah. <laughs> like, five times the poof. Your hair, if I brush it with a curly comb. Pretty fucking much, yes. <laughs> a full clown wig comes out. Penis head. Exactly. Uh, so I have to, like, walk right past him. All right. Um... The I told me to go there. It's supposed to, it's, as far as I know. I'm you trusting. step in, and everybody who's standing outside this room just kind of looking at this black space as this all goes down. Because this would have been Torin went, and then because of the way the time has passed, this is what he was doing while you all were figuring out the door because he got pissed off and stormed off. Okay. You watch as his body, and I need you to make a strength check, please. Strength saving throw, excuse me. Let's see how this plays out. That's funny. You watch as he goes walking through, and an outline of his body is left in the black. Like, and it looks almost an amber brown as light starts passing through it. And everybody else tries to follow him. As for you, about... 15 feet through a 20 foot long corridor and hallway the sugars start burning your eyes the smell of coffee is lodged fully in your sinus cavities you can taste the texture of the texture of gelatin Mm -hmm. is through your mouth and you realize that some wingnut filled this entire room with coffee gelatin. And I need you to make a constitution safe because you've probably ingested about four pounds of it in this walk. Through your nose. You said constitution? Yes. 19. Okay, so you're quite awake at this point because that's a lot of caffeine. And probably would be, we'll say that you've got the benefits of a long rest now. Um, The rest of you, as he gets stuck in the gelatin 15 feet in, which is actually kind of impressive, guys. I'm going to fucking set up my breath weapon. Okay. To blow up. Okay. A a tunnel board. Of what? It's a line of lightning, right? No fire. Line of fire? As he walks in, you smell coffee. And sweet. Burnt marshmallows. <laughs> and then you see a light at the end of the body shaped hole. And you smell melting gelatin. And more coffee. And what's everybody doing is you can now see a. Okay, so it went out in a cone from your mouth, and it cones outward like you would expect in a ballistics gel if you went and sprayed a flame out of it in a conical manner, so... Did it go through the, to the end? 15 feet? Oh, yeah. You hit a wall, and you burned a door. And a door doesn't get a dexterity saving throw. No, but Ms. Mildred? She's behind you. And now she's covered in coffee gelatin. Congratulations. Well, maybe she'll wake up. Snap out of it. What's everybody doing as they see this happen? You notice that there's it's jiggling because everybody who followed him kind of got the jitters. I am going to fairly methodically just kind of sword. A tunnel as I'm pursuing. It cuts like you would expect Jello to. You don't have to roll to hit that. Yeah. Got a Sharpie? Uh, do you need a Sharpie? Possibly. In the near future. <laughs> like a reasonable more Sharpie or like a Sharpie Sharpie? Well, if people fall asleep with their shoes on, I need a real Sharpie. <laughs> So, Kalor starts carving away pieces of jello, and you watch it bounce and jiggle as they go like this with their sword back and forth. What are y'all doing? I'm just standing and watching. I'm gonna try to follow her. 
I'm okay, this would be considered um, this would be considered tough terrain. You can move it about fifteen feet per minute, and that's just because you're about knee deep in jello. Some people cast darkness spells. Some people just fill rooms with jelly. <laughs> I don't want to get your family. I love you. <laughs> if you fall asleep. Oh, I'd make you look like a cat. Face. It's okay. Your shoes aren't on. No, your shoes aren't on. You're good. <laughs> That's why I went. <laughs> Didn't I try to just drink one of those? Yeah. Yes. It'd be I. Okay. I'm. Mm-hmm. ADHD plus energy I know how it works. I was chugging energy drinks. Okay, but the, the, the can itself needs to be on the floor. Yeah, it can't be on the... Because hashtag they don't pay us. Yep. Hashtag I was trying not to fall asleep while they were talking. Meh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm just going to keep working all the way through. So am I able to see the like all the way to the burnt door? Yes, with pretty glistening piles of gelatin all the way through it. Um, I'm gonna s- let me see, let me double check here. How many of these do I have? So you can chuck a grenade in here. <laughs> grenade? No. Something a little bit more fun. Possibility. It's well, waste, man. You never know what I'm gonna do. Oh, we got kinds of creams too. Alright, so. Oh, God. I can't it. Alright, I'm gonna do it. Walk into a room full of gelatin. So it's just a room where it's like gelatin wall to wall, or mm-hmm. is it, you said it's up to the knee, right? Well, it's up to the knee, and the path that Kalora has carved and shoveled outward, it kind of spills out in a gooey mess from the tunnel that's being carved out because they're being nice enough to shovel it as they go. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me no. <laughs> anyway. <coughs> so it would, like, Pudgy, imagine me oh. filling a 12 foot by 15 foot by 15 foot room with gelatin. And you walk through a double door that's 10 feet tall by 7 feet wide. And Kalora is trying to carve a large swath with like a two-handed sword tunnel through this and shovel it out as they go. By the way, I need you to make a constitution save. You've been at this for about five minutes. I'm basically using my outline. It's on your shoes by now, anybody who's out in that room. The answer's no. The answer's no. My bonus won't get me up to a 10. It's so. occurred to you that there's actually enough gelatin here that you're actually tired. Yeah. And you collapse from swinging your sword for a solid three minutes, That's cutting your way through this room and shoveling it out. So, can I try to help is, her? Who's all in the room? Yeah. Who's all in the room? I don't know. Who went into the coffee fo- jelly filled room? It was like me and my 20 followers. Yeah, there's like 20 people. Oh, Some of them are stuck. Well, that wouldn't work because I don't want to kill any of the followers. Oh, yeah. I. Because well, if there was no one in there, I could cast Thunder Wave, which is a 15 foot cube, and just Thunder Blast, Thunder Wave all the gelatin out of the way. But then anybody in that 15 foot cube gets 2d8. Hold on. Yeah? You were saying something. I'm in the room as well. Okay. I wanna. I was following her. Oh, he's following her. I've been following her. So am I like I one of the only ones Alex. not in the room? Okay, you were behind him. You three aren't. Mm-hmm. You aren't unless you choose to be. Well, I have. I haven't gone in the room because I was trying to plan what I could do, but. Okay. Doesn't I go really in behind the Kalora and give her a healing potion. Um, I'm not dying. I know. Um. <laughs> That Just tired, won't do anything. Oh, man. I could use, I could use uh, probably a Crib. fistful of what I'm Crib. cutting Crib. away. Okay. Primitive. Have I made it through yet, John? Like oh, yeah, you're all the way through at this point. You have like this really Primitive. thin barrier, maybe a foot thick, that you can easily push through, and you can see the door, yeah. which is burning on the other yeah. side. So, so when we I'm going to get through and start grabbing and pulling out the followers. 
On the side where Torn is, is there still gelatin, or is it all dissipated from his fire cone? Where his fire cone is, it turned to liquid and seeped under the door and through the door. There is a slippery mess on the other side of that doorway, which opens up into a relatively large, what looks like a kitchen area. Um, there, with a relative glance, you can see that there's like um, preserved grains, pickled mm. things in jars, mostly vegetables, fish. Mm. Yep, she kept pickled herring in jars. Yay! I'm still in the very first like area. I never went through like the coffee and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about uh, doing Dimension Door and appearing near Torrent. You go to see that now. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, because I can see yep. it. I can Dimension Door. Yep, you can totally do that. Um, <laughs> so you don't have to roll for anything. Your Dimension Door gets you from point A to point B, and you are now in what looks like a kind of kitchen area. It's got a very large thing. Um, Looks like there's um, urns full of flour and things like that that have preserved it well. Olive oil, yeast, everything's very clearly labeled. It looks like a bakery type kitchen. Am I going to know if like it's safe in there or if it's dangerous in there? Or? Oral perception. It's a kitchen. It doesn't mean there's not unsafe shit. I'm just saying. It's a kitchen. There's, of course it's not safe shit. They're going to kill you? That's uh, something you have to roll for. You're, nice. in, you're in there with a lot of derpy ass people, so anything's possible. And the floor is covered in coffee gelatin. No, D20. Ah. Uh, I got an 11. Slippery floor? Best you It's oh, pretty that's normal with the kitchen, as far as you can tell. I mean, is there like, is it a standard manual kitchen with like 20, a portrait? Except for the fact that you would notice there's some alchemaic tools like an amblic and mortar and pestle and. A calcinator, you know, like actual what looks like lab equipment in a corner. I'm going to use stove. Just because I don't trust the uh, surrounding area. Okay, go ahead and roll stealth check. Uh, 26. Well, unless somebody's actively looking for your happy ass, here's how this looks. I would have seen him pop up in front of me right now. You would have watched his dimension door open and looks around the room and starts wandering off towards the back corner. You look away back over your shoulder really quickly to see what's going on with Mildred and start pulling people out like you said. Next thing you know, you have no idea where Wisp just went. <laughs> Those that are on my side now as far as the father do. Oh, they all make it through in about five minutes. No, I'm telling them to find the drain. Because it's the kitchen. I'm assuming there's a cleaning, cleaning supplies. There's a hole in the stone in the floor, yeah. Make a path and like squeegee that shit and like make it so we don't all die. Cause you know, oh, I slipped in the bill and fucking broke my neck. No. And I then, would totally do that to you guys. <laughs> that one fucking anything's possible. And I got a bunch of geniuses with me. <laughs> <clears throat> um. Once they get into the kitchen, are there any other exits or doors? I'm trying to find the sub level. So I'm trying to do a basement. Um, there are... There are I just asked the eye to show So you walk in through what would be basically the south-facing entrance because that goes into the main atrium and all of that stuff. There would be one... To, there would be a door to your right and a door at the far end, 20 foot back this room. Just ask the... Ask Gideon for guidance and just follow her until I get to that room. Turn right. Take stairs at fall at far end of hallway, down twenty three floors. Beware barriers at floor 20, 15, 7, and nine. On the stairs. Floors are not numbered in chronological order. Horseshit is this. The floors were numbered in the order in which they were filled. I mean, considering whose tower this is, it's understandable why. But <laughs> it makes perfect sense. Oh, yeah. I was going to ball her straight to try to head down the stairs with everybody having toe until I find this room. So everybody else would now so, see a large group of what looks like commoners, people of artisan and trade and merchants, following Torin down the stairs. By the way, the first floor is na- labeled 76. 
you go until I find the one I need. Or I run into something I need to get through. What floor did they say that was on? 23. No, they just said it was down 23 floors. What? No, it's on, 20, it's on the 23rd floor. It's, it's room 23. What, sub-level? Sub, it says sub-level. It says sub-level 26. Sub-level 36. 36. So you need 36. to get to level 36, which is 23 down from 70-something that we're on. And well, they're not, they're not, not you. necessarily. They aren't. Okay, so it was specified they aren't completely labeled correctly. That's what I'm saying. Or they are labeled. You hear Gideon pipe up. They are labeled correctly in the order in which each level was filled. So yeah. level, sub-level 36 is 23 levels below whatever level we're on. No. It's just not in order. We need to go 23 levels down until we read the one that says sub-level 36. I'm okay. just going to keep going until I find a level. Yeah. Until I find the barriers, because that's what yeah. we do. <sighs> you should be a part of the Mildred's group, just saying. Mildred's yeah. group? Yeah. Ronan, Ronan, no, no, no. Ronan should be a part of Mildred's group. Oh. <coughs> now, you do hear Gideon give one warning. His comprehension is broken. Sub-level one is at the very bottom of the tower. She filled the one for most destructive experiments first. I mean, that makes sense, but like. Yeah, I just said. Do you have an elevator? What is an elevator? A device used to descend to floors more efficiently and effectively. Once every three floors down, I can. Uh, I can. There is a teleportation circle which will transport you. Either four floors up or four floors down. Numbers may vary. I'm just gonna keep marching down the stairs until I find the level I want. If that's just not the first one that you, the first sign you see after going down like two, three floors of nothing labeled. They were never labeled because they were never numbered. They were never filled. Yeah. <laughs> so the first, the first level I come to that is numbered after it's on your Is seven. Oh boy. What kind of ADHD fucking brain thought was this shit? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. We just, it said no, that we needed just, to go I'm down just, 23 just, no, floors. I'm, not, not even, no. I'm going to The actual I'm stairwell going. stops at seven <clears throat> and a hallway starts. So, so to explain. Beware barriers at 20. 15, 12, and 7. Even if you're straight down, you're not <laughs> I didn't lie. 23rd floor. It's not level, it's not the 23rd floor, it's 36th so floor, but 23 I'm down gonna, from where we can started. Can I the door? Okay. That's dead. That's what, I is what he said. Yeah, but what I'm saying is... Gideon did say dead. descend 23 floors. Floors, yeah. So if we just descended 23 floors straight down, it should hit us at love sub-level 36, and then we find room 23D, and that's where we need to fucking go. Okay. Yes, but just think about how the rest of the tower has been filled so far. While that is a numbered floor, ergo, it was filled 36th in order, and number one was what? filled first, and it's the bottommost floor. Oh, yeah, I've already caught on to the logic. I'm, I was trying to explain it to Ronan, and Ronan's trying to explain it to me in a different way, and I'm just like... It is one hell of a logic puzzle. I'm going to make your brains all break. Oh, mine's, mine's not broken. Mine's already got it. It actually makes sense to me. I'm sorry. <laughs> is, do I, really is the door say anything or any? Like try to like, just open it, up. open it, see what happens. Okay, so to answer your question, yes, the door would say something. It says R and D applications of invisibility on indigenous species. Does my animal sense start going off? Go ahead and, like, you have a way to sense them? Yeah, I'm a ranger. I have animal handling and animal sense. Um, animal sense has a role attached to it in your notes somewhere or on your character information. That's actually a class ability. I go to the bathroom. And that'll tell you what bonuses you get to that roll, because that's ranger specific. 
I know it's a thing. Yeah. Man, I need to get some more levels so I can get that fucking arrow sense. I'm like, you're new. What level are we? What level are you? Nine. 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 Yeah, we're like yeah. nine. I need the next one. What's, what is Torn trying to do currently? Figure out what this door is about. I open the door. And he's trying to figure out if he senses anything on it. Because the door read, Applications of Invisibility on Indigenous Species. I'm Research and Development. I'm back to roll 90. This is Wisp's kind of hellhole. Nine. Once the door is open, yeah, can I use prestidigitation to take the gelatin that is currently on my body and just send it flying into the room? So that means you have nine. Once you're near the door, sure. Oh, it's hunters. I want to try to help her. You, you can't help me with this. No, nope, you got to figure out what you're going to do instead of what happened instead of that. I want to try to take the jello off of her though. No, it's just a fine layer of jello on my clothes and skin because I was wading through it. <laughs> you have the same problem with yourself, actually. I'm casting press. I'm going up to the door and casting prestidigitation. A cantrip to send it flying into the room to see if it'll land on anything I can't currently see. Twenty's gonna be the fun one. Yes. So does, right. the, 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 does it land on things I couldn't currently see? Um. Hello. Roll. <laughs> Perception. So it's called a Hunter's Sense, and I have like a 60 again? foot range on it. That's all it really says. It is. 60 foot range. Um, what's the parameters? Was it 20? Just is, is like sense. Danger. Okay, so go ahead and roll perception. Oh, wow. I'll give you advantage on this. So 2d20, take the highest. Oh, Perception. 23. So on a 23, we'll say that you're pretty sure there's some things moving around in there. Looking through the door, you can see what looks like broken enclosures in a couple of places. Is there like dust or anything on the ground? No, Dirt. it's disturbingly clean. Like, you've been in a few places and a few hairy situations as a group, so you all would know what a gelatinous ooze or a slime does as far as cleaning dungeons, cleaning caves. You know, there isn't anything. There's not dust. You're pretty sure that there's not anything on there. What time is it? A gelatinous ooze, or a gelatinous ooze is a very weak creature to this party. But applications of invisibility on a gelatinous ooze is a very interesting science experiment. So did you say we're at a room filled with uh, basically the possibility of invisible creatures? Correct. I have an idea about the keeping this up. Yes. I'm just gonna go around this way. You working on figuring that out and No, I have another I have a spell and that's what I can use. I'm trying to I want to look around the room to see if anything is in here. I want to dig myself. Okay, go ahead and roll perception at a disadvantage. Can I dig myself? 2d20, take the lowest. My, my perception you asked for was a 22. What were you looking for again? To see if the gelatin I had sent flying off myself into the corridor landed and stuck to things I could not currently see. You watched it kind of slump? At the bottom of the ground, on a ground piece, it kind of went like this, just a little bit mm -hmm. upward where there was nothing. And then it lay down on the ground slowly afterwards. Fourteen. Fourteen? You're pretty sure it's empty. What you doing? I'm just watching all this. And like, you? There's not much I can really do. Watching. <laughs> there's not much to do. We're not in. Oh, there's plenty to do. Oh, there's one hell of a lot to do. You got to figure out what's going on because you need to get from one side of this particular floor to the other to get to the next uh -huh. stairwell. It's up to you. Big Dumber, I'm gonna just respectfully and carefully, not, not try to kick something I can't see. You know. 
just kind of meander in being very gingerly with my football. I don't want to step on a tail or kick a small creature or, you know, hurt something. And there are obviously species in here that I cannot see. Oh, yeah. So I'm making it real obvious that I am being very respectful of their presence while not being able to discern where they are. Most animals respond well to a clear act of respect. Well, I would point out that this said indigenous species. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You hear the tapping of claws mm -hmm. as you enter into the room. Mm -hmm. You hear the skittering of claws. And Any orcs, goblins, or uh, kobolds? Something smells like cobalt to you. Well, I would know. No, because I have that uh, <laughs> uncanny ability to like uh, because they're like my MSI and the ones I hunted the most, like I know. If yeah, you, you can smell that that's probably in here, but. I can't tell where it's at, but I can tell it. What it's it's there, at. yes. Proceed cautiously. <laughs> See, she's not picky. She wants attention from boys and girls. Really, all I can do, I am out of spell slots until we actually sleep. We could have slept in the jello filled room. There's a kitchen attack. I'm planning a jello. See, I need a solid eight hours before I get spell slots back. Nobody said you all are not capable of taking long rests at safe points in this jet in this tower. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'll handle till the party decides we want to be done. At this point, right. it's technically like only like two <gasps> in the afternoon, right? I'm gonna take that bag of fucking sand I kept. Do that whole little. <laughs> it's trying to like oh, outline no. shit. How are you trying for coverage? Or coverage are you trying for distance? Because that would actually affect it. Because if you're going like this versus going like this to get it out further, it's gonna cause a different spread. Not really. One I tell you to roll to hit, the other they get a dex save. That's the difference. More like coverage. Like I'm trying to get a clear path through. All right, cool. Without like trying to like, I ain't trying to hurt nothing. I'm just trying to make sure I don't like run into something. I guess is the best. <laughs> so thing. like where Kalora is trying to be real careful, you're trying to create a path of visibility. All right. Like so, basically, like it's like you're walking through something, and you do it in the dark, and you kind of know where shit's at. So like you do that, you either do one or two methods. You swing your arms, or you do that, edge the one foot out, and then take your step. You're doing that, edge the foot out, and I'm like, Whoosh. All right, so here's exactly what everybody else sees. Torin goes like this, and a three foot by three foot cubic, clear, quite obviously invisible object appears for approximately 45 seconds as the sand sizzles and smokes off of its outer exterior and dissolves. No, no I'm fucking one of those things. That's such a, that, that, that means a cube. Mm -hmm. Everyone? It's actually about six inches to your left, Kalora, because of how far you've poked into the room. It goes like this. You hit sand across Kalora's back, and there's a space between Kalora and the cube. And I'd be like, just like, as I you look to your left and see this through the cube, you can see a um, sign on a broken enclosure directly across from you that says, Caution, invisible cube. Oh, hi there, friend. Uh, uh, I'm going to take a no, do, 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 you do. hear a squishing noise. I'm gonna take a solid step away. Can I do a squishing noise? <laughs> Everybody, Dude. shut up! I'm going to take a good look at the ground and watch for the dust to stop existing. It, the, the cube's just kind of stationary there. They don't really move. 
quickly. Cool. Can you grab one and move it though? What is that? You can try. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, is there something like? Mm, anything come up to her left? Because that's on her right, right? The cube's on her right. I'm taking it. I'm like a gingerly step. To the left of the hallway. It's a little way, a little bit away from the cube. Like I don't want to stumble and hit you. I'm sorry. You're I'm fine, and you can clear it easily, even at the shoulder's width. I mean, Kalora is relatively broad with her wings. She's mm. wider than I am. And I've got my wings pinned like flat to my back. Yeah. So there's about a foot and a half between you and this thing clear on this hallway. Mm-hmm. The catch is that to your left. You see a sign that says, Treated Mephit Enclosure. What? Mephits. And you watch as little puffs of ash and smoke pop off in one place, met by little blasts of ice in another, and what looks like steam gusts out of nowhere as well. And they just kind of... All out the entire thing. Because I already took and gave well, it. I'm, I'm going to continue to proceed cautiously. That seems to be a closed enclosure. It's not me. That's in there. Yeah. yeah. It's no. Me. Well, then it's put away. It's the one that's supposed to be turned off, but it's not. That's somebody dialing on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So here, but please, can I get a It is. Five thirty. Five thirty. I think yeah. the phone is going off. In, it's dead now, it's okay. Yeah. The, um... So, the little spurts of random, different, like... Elements. You would know that a method is a lesser de- elemental like demon that's normally a cross between two of the primary elements, earth, air, fire, and water. So, but no, th- those seem to be in all in the same, like... The, the and in a closure that does seem to be sealed at the moment. Can though there are cracks in the glass. The... Okay, from where I'm standing... And every now and then a burst of, like, mud splats against it. From where I'm standing, and where she's at, so I'm assuming... Yeah. How many enclosures in is the methods on the, on the left side? Four. So how far down the hall is that? About 30 feet. Halfway? Or Not three. sure. It's a pretty long floor, apparently. Okay, but... So fourth in on the right is a damaged enclosure with the <coughs> so that is cube in front of it. Second on the right, much bigger enclosure. Okay. Is there like a center line we can see on the floor? No. Nope. Or just pathway? Or is it just all like one cobblestone kind of walkway? It's kind of like palace stones, but yeah. All right, I'm gonna walk up to behind Kalora and do it again with a little hand. As you throw your hand out, you watch as the sand lays across the back of something that kind of resembles like a snapping turtle. Like the way that it works out in your vision is you remember those find the picture things where you stared at the weird dots and it created a 3D image? Mm Mm-hmm. It kind of looks like that of a turtle. Butter ass facing you. Mm-hmm. Facing, or um, face facing you. Mm-hmm. We're talking a snapping turtle. I know. Can I talk to it? Do you have to talk to animals? I do, because I'm a hunter. Well, you can try. Yeah. Is that like speak with animals, the spell? The spell. Or, okay. So go for it. Do I need to cast it? Or just you just say you cast it, and then you start talk, and then let to let me know, and then yeah, you can have a conversation with turtle. No, is it just specific to one animal, or can I hear all animals? It's specific to the targeted animal that you're speaking with most of the time. Oh wait, now speak with animals works with all animals for a duration. Yeah. Until you take a long rest. A gelatinous cube is not an animal, it's a monster. No, but now that I've cast that, I can clearly see the turtle. I'm going to say hi. Do I hear any other animals? It was... Hi. 
Can you see anything that I can't see? I can't even see myself. That's super. Do you mind? Do you mind if I was to have you leave me out of here? Would you be so kind? Uh, where are we? That I couldn't even answer you for my own self, so... Do you have food? Ooh, I do. I need food. Hungry girl. Sounds like food. Do you have food? Mm-hmm. 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 I'm assuming it eats. Is it herbal, right? Invisible. You can't tell. It's invisible. It's no, you said it looks like a snapping turtle. I know they eat vegetables. They eat. Actually, they're carnivorous. Yeah, they eat small fish. And bugs. Yep. I'm going to take a piece of the wyvern that I have in my fucking bag and I'm going to like. Which is free. It's big enough, I'm gonna like hand it to him so when he oh. bites it, then I'll let go, but like he can't get my hand. Mm-hmm. It's a great picture of me. So, you feel it, like you see, what you would see is the sand falling off of it as it lunges forward and takes a perfectly wedge shaped chunk out of a little wyvern steak about this thing. And you hear what sounds like turtle coughing, but it disappears. It's like it—it's literally like the air just takes this wedge out to anybody who doesn't know that he's talking to a turtle. Get to go for another bite. Yes, and chokes on the second one. Like chokes, and dies, or just like no, just <coughs> mm, food. Haven't eaten in. Well, since that mouse that didn't see me. Desert mice are scrawny. They are. Kind of bony. Not so yummy. Anyway. What do you want? What's a turtle's movement speed? Five. Beep. Per minute. Per round. Per six seconds. <laughs> I have longer stride. It's an ability. To Works on your preferred terrain, but yeah. But you can use it on a. You can. You, you can. It, 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 the level that we're at, I can touch an animal and make it go faster. Yes, you would double its movement speed to ten feet per round. Animal. Which I can live with. Do you know what 10 feet per round means? I do. How heavy is it? I'm stuck. You can certainly try and pick it up. I kind of want to flip it and like take it. Like in the world game. But wouldn't that require you to be able to see it? It says sand on it. Okay. Not once you flip it, it doesn't. It's a turtle. It's a hard surface. I still have more sand. I have more sand. I can eat it and it's like whoosh. You can certainly try. Okay, well, I'm gonna fuck you. You're about to watch some turtle tossing. <laughs> okay. What is he doing? I'm gonna chuck the sand like kind of over where, where he. Like, the noise you back. see that nice, like, find the image 3D turtle again? I find the edge. And I give him a lip. Hey, I thought we were friends. We are, buddy. You're gonna help me out real quick. Uh, this is. Just... I can't do shit upside down. <laughs> You're an asshole. Uh, I'm gonna cut myself and pop my boon. Oh, <laughs> hey, that bag you grow, of flowers. You that bag of flowers that I got was is gonna about to come in handy. I'm gonna toss you like a handful of marigolds. Right. Flowers. Marigold flowers are a favorite food for most turtle species. 
May I go in and snap into this? Hello. And I'm going to use my. I'm, not, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just use my increased speed that I get with my moon, and I'm gonna try to get a Hello. good little shove going. Roll ahead. Sure, sure. Fifteen. <laughs> that definitely hits his armor class. Now I need you to make a strength check versus damage. Strength saving throw, excuse me. Dirty twenty. And do 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 you hear you watch as Torin goes like this you strain flipping this thing over and shoving it. I mean it's like a hundred pound turtle. We're not talking something little here. Turtles are heavy. And you hear it kathunk and like the jagged like alligator snapping turtle type shell. You can hear as it scrapes and spins going down the hallway, and then stops about 15 feet on a dirty 20. As something flows over top of it, washing away, and you watch as the bright colored red blood starts flowing as half of this turtle is eaten. Now the weird thing about this is from people who are looking, it would be like a two-dimensional cross-section of a turtle because the rest of its body is invisible. But its innards are not. So if you turn it this way, bloody turtle half piece. But if you turn it this way, invisible turtle. Blood pool. <laughs> Good job, you killed the fucking turtle. No, he didn't. Something else did it. Can someone help me? I'm stuck. Then be stuck. I'm stupid gonna, game, stupid prizes. I'm gonna go. I mean, to, I guess I do can deserve this. Can I do do do? Ow! You ran your mouth at Kalora. She is not your friend. <laughs> I'm gonna go. Does anything happen? Or just like it's just like I, I went down there and got split in half. He got split in half, and you notice there's like blood floating on something in the air. You're not sure what. Gotta figure out what you. Well, since there's blood pooling on the floor, do I see footprints? No. Mm -hmm. It's just staying. It's just. It wells in an arc shape. About. It looks like a half moon F crescent, and then you see a second one. Does anything happen as I approach the turtle? Well, as you get closer to where the turtle is, you can see that the wall on that side looks like it's been broken out and ripped inward. Oh the last letter of the sign that was posted over top of it is an R. And that's where we're going to go to break. You're welcome to look at the um, monster manual in the process. No, but I'm going to uh, empty shell of turtle. Do what, what in an R? Something ripped the bars in. The only thing that is labeled and left on the sign labeling that enclosure is R. what looks like a sign. The letter R is the only thing readable. Well, it's been a fun game. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> all of a sudden, Wisp goes, we all going to die. Well, it's time for a butter break. <laughs> Well, you know what? Kalora seemed to be doing pretty all right with her. I am not here to fight oh. anything. I am just uh, making my. Uh, you had the stop yeah. recording button. Yeah. I, I think I think her, her strategy is working out best for everything involved right now. The I am not a threat. 